Hi guys, today we're gonna look at another free resource on Azure, and that's a VM. Now, if you sign up for an Azure subscription, for the first 12 months that you have that, there's a certain number of resources that you can use within limits for that 12 month period for free. And also within the first 30 days, you get $200 in Azure credit that you can use for, for anything really. Now, one of the resources that you can use in the first 12 months is a modest VM. It's a 1BS VM, which is a burstable core and one gig of RAM. Now, there's not a whole lot you can do with that, but there are a few things that you can do with that. And one of those is create a privacy VPN that runs on OpenVPN. And if all you're using it for is such a, as a personal private VPN, that's more than enough compute to handle that kind of load. And I've been using this particular setup in my subscriptions uh, for a while now, when, since I wrote this script about six years ago to set up an OpenVPN instance on Azure, there is a way that you can basically run it for free for the first 12 months. Now it's free for the VM and the storage, but you still have to pay for the IP address, which is probably the only caveat, which if that's the case, that's still gonna be pretty inexpensive if you deallocate the VM and then release the IP address, which I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. But in any case, once you create the open VPN, you can use it like a privacy VPN, something like NordVPN or another similar uh, setup. Now you can use it on your mobile device or on your uh, desktop or your laptop. And I like to use it when I'm on the road. If I'm in a hotel or coffee shop, I'll just start the VM on Azure and then connect my laptop or my phone. And then I can use it to connect to the internet securely without having somebody snoop on my traffic in the facility that I'm in. So it's just a way of ensuring that I've got a pretty much an encrypted channel uh, to the internet. And I know that I'm not going to be uh, dealing with you know, people that are trying to you know, sniff my traffic in a local context. But in any case, the privacy VPN is just one application, but it's the one I'm going to use for my demo. But to show you what I'm talking about in terms of cost, um, the costs themselves are actually pretty inexpensive, even if you do pay for it, because you can deallocate the VM. But in the first few months, it's pretty much going to be uh, cheap as free or pretty much maybe one or $2 a month, which is still going to be rather inexpensive compared to what you'd even pay for something like a privacy VPN. And the cool thing about this resource is you can spin it up anywhere in the world. So if I wanted to access uh, sites that are only available in the US while I'm traveling abroad, I can use this VPN to do that. And so it's just a cool way to allow me to have a point of presence in any Azure region for that reason as well. So let's just go right over to the portal and look at the resource. And then I'm going to show you the ARM template to create this. And then I'm going to look at the price calculator just to show you what the costs of this would be if you didn't pay for it. And then if you actually pay for it and deallocate it, I'm going to show you how you can use it for uh, that period of time beyond the 12 months. And then I'm going to show you how you can use the mobile app on Azure to start and stop the VM so you don't incur costs for 24 by 7 uses. So here is the VM that I created and it's associated resources. You can see that it's got networking and it's got the VM itself and a disk and other things like that. So if I go into the resource, you can see it's a B1S and you, it's got, that's a single VCBU burstable with one gig of RAM, which is plenty for what I'm doing on this particular application. It's got a public IP address. And like I said, if you deallocate the VM, then this goes back into the pool and you only pay for what you use while you're running it. So if you come over here to disks, you can see the disk is right here. It's using a standard HDD, local redundant storage. And um, it's just the, the standard OS disk that you would get with this particular VM and a low cost option. Since this doesn't really require much in terms of disk access, it's going to work just fine. And then this is the, the cost of the machine would be free for the most part if you uh, got the free resources on Azure uh, for the first 12 months. So even if you paid for it, it'd still be pretty uh, inexpensive if you used it only for while you're actually running the app. So to demonstrate the app, I'm just going to pull it up in a browser right here. And it pulls up this um, particular website. It's using a self-signed cert. So um, it's uh, pretty basic in what you can do with it. So it's just simple open VPN server. And I just type in a a new client like that and add it. And it just generates the credentials and I can download the credentials for OpenVPN. And uh, then I can revoke those credentials, what have you. That's just the web app, very basic web app. So very simple. Um, now I can use these credentials to connect to this VPN using the OpenVPN client. Okay, now that I've downloaded that, I can you can click on this and it open it and you can, I've already imported it, but if you import it, it'll import it into OpenVPN, which I already have the client running. You come down here to the client, you can right click on um, connect and it will connect to that OpenVPN server. 
And now I have my OpenVPN you know, client installed. Now you would do the same thing for your phone too. You would, I have instructions on how to import all this on the GitHub repo, which I'll just show you what that looks like. So if I do uh, my GitHub repo, if I go github.com and just pull this guy up, this is my um, repo right here. And if you want instructions on how to connect, I've got that at the bottom of how to run this. It's pretty easy to set up and install. You just run an ARM template. But if you want to, I'm using the OpenVPN GUI, and then you can get TunnelBlick for a Mac OS, and there's an OpenVPN client for Android, OpenVPN for iOS. So basically something for everybody. And once it's up and running, you can do your what is my IP, and uh, it will show you well, your IP address, and that should match the IP address that I have here. So that shows you that I am connected to it. So that shows that I am able to use this kind of like a privacy VPN because of that. Now, if I wanted just to look at the, the ARM template that deployed this, the ARM template is really the resource that I used to create it. And that's in the, the code repository. And it's pretty basic for a VM. It really that doesn't do much in terms of deployment. It just creates some resources. Um, the resources that it creates are, of course, the, the storage account for associated for, for diagnostics. It's using uh, the networking resources. So you're going to get NICs and IP addresses and what have you. The, the magic that makes all this happen for the install, uh, those are the NSG rules, is the extension right here. Um, so this is just using an ARM template VM extension. Uh, and it's using the, the script extension. So basically it calls out to a script, which is in this repository with the variables from this particular, um, this particular installation. So you can see that it's calling out to that script. And then that script actually runs once the VM creates and the script itself is just an install script. So it just runs some uh, installer uh, type stuff. It sets up the app and the OpenVPN server. The app is the, the web app that allows you to configure the clients. And then the, the OpenVPN server, of course, is running uh, in the background as well. And once that's up and running, then you just log into it and everything's good. If you want to skip a step or two, the, the repo, it's pretty straightforward. You can come back over to the the host of the, re, the repo, the, the homepage, and just click deploy to Azure. And that will take you to uh, the Azure portal, which will allow you then to uh, basically just deploy it using this form right here. So you don't have to do any kind of shell commands or anything like that. Just deploy to Azure and you fill out this form and then come back in about two or three minutes and it's up. And then you go to the, the endpoint, uh, just like I did, create a client and then attach it and you're up and running. Now, the ARM template is pretty straightforward and the resources of VM, so not much to speak of there. And, and this is where uh, you can really think about this uh, in terms of costs. So. If you were to run this as a just standard VPN, uh, 24 by seven, you would expect this to run on all the time. So that's about 730 hours a month. Uh, if you have like a 31 month, uh, 31 day month, and it's gonna run you about $9 uh, to have that on 24 by seven. Now, if you deallocate it, that means that say you only used it, say 10 hours a month, uh, it would bring it down to about a dollar and a half. And the same thing would be true on the IE, the, the disc. You pay for the disc, whether you use it or not. Um, and then the IP address is a basic one. So if you use it for say 10 hour, uh, $10 hours a month, it's gonna cost you about four cents. And so basically brings the, the total cost down to about a dollar 68 if you only use this VPN for uh, basically 10 hours a month. So even if you're not using it for free, it's still really, really cheap. So uh, it's much cheaper than a privacy VPN. And you know that the connection is secured because you created it and the outflow is coming out of a Microsoft data center. And it does a pretty good job of masking the, the traffic too, because it's basically offloading it on the VM and then natting it back through Azure. So it comes out of Azure looking just like standard virtual machine traffic at that point. So it doesn't, um, uh, it does well for traversing networks and, and, and firewalls and that kind of thing as well. So OpenVPN is definitely a product worth looking at. So again, the costs are low. The, the script is pretty straightforward. The VM is very inexpensive. It's not something that you would um, have to worry about paying for. Even if you did leave it on, it's probably not going to bust your pocket. But I didn't really like to turn it off and on. So 
I use the mobile app for that rather than having to log into the Azure portal. So if I just pop up my app on my phone, I can start and stop the VPN. So I'll show you how to do that using the mobile app. So get the app from the app store and open it up, go to virtual machines in the top left, and then select the open VPN VM. And then you can see stop in the lower left. You can tap on that as well as look at the stats of it and then hit stop. And then that will stop it. And then it'll deallocate. Then to start it, just simply hit start and it will start it. And then once that's done, it will come back and it'll be up and running. And then you can connect to your VM after a few seconds when it's up and running. So hopefully this has been an informative video for you. The ability to use VMs for all kinds of stuff is really up to you what you want to use them for because you have complete autonomy in the context of the VM. This is just one that I have found very useful in Azure. So if you like this, please share it with your friends. It's just a really cool way to have a very cheap VPN on Azure. So for a couple of bucks a month, you can have a privacy VPN up and running. So I'll link the GitHub repository in this video description below, and hopefully I'll see you on future videos.